presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, again, let's take a look at what we have going on. Well, actually, first, what I want to say, we're going to change the ad for it, but we have tomorrow, uh, yet again, another installment of live trading uh, Fridays with Larry Pasavento. This is, uh, I really always look forward to this. Um, this is going to be the second and fourth Friday of every month. Again, come check it out. This is from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. You can sit back and watch Larry trade. This is pretty awesome because, you know, you get to follow along and kind of get some insight into uh, how Larry trades. And of course, um, Larry is a veteran if there ever uh, was one in the market. So go ahead and check out uh, the services page on TFNN. That is also on the front page right down here. All right, let's take a look. So a little bit of a rebound today, huh? You have the E-mini trading up about 2.13%. Uh, obviously, same with the SPY. The Russell Futures of about 2.24%. Uh, the NQs at 2.78%. And then the Dow Futures up about 1.7%. Gold also doing pretty well today, about 1.26%, trading at 2,463 on that contract. Uh, you have silver trading at 27.55 of about 2.27% and copper uh, green as well. Uh, Tesla recovering a little bit, um, but of course had a pretty big sell off uh, yesterday. Hate these weekly charts on some of these things here. You have a lot of people thinking like, hey, you know, I mean, well, like, I mean, it's given that whole run up off. And that was a run up on some decent volume as well. You know, so we'll see what happens with that. Dollar trading at 103.22. Still dynamics up a little bit at 107. I want to see Lucid quickly up 7.39%. The reason why I say that is because you have Rivian up as well, uh, up about 8.63%, trading at 14.97. Uh, Palantir, this is some pretty big news. Pretty solid. Uh, we're trading up about 10.8%. 6% right now in Palantir after a pretty big decline on August 5th. Of course, so everything else uh, was selling off as well. What is going on with that? Well, they're partnering with Microsoft to deliver what Microsoft is calling enhanced analytics and AI services to classified networks uh, for critical national security operations. That is, they're selling this stuff to the government, uh, which is pretty solid. Let's take a look here. Uh, Palantir works closely with the government to provide software, visualize army positions, among other services. Uh, they'll use this partnership to launch its products, such as Gotham, Foundry, Apollo, and AIP. And that is going to be on Azure. Um, I think the military uses a lot of Azure, uh, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but this is pretty phenomenal, right? Uh, this is great for Palantir. They reported earnings earlier in the week, raising its annual revenue forecast between $2.7 billion and $2.75 billion. And it's up from $2.68 to $2.69. Uh, Carp said, as the CEO said in a letter to shareholders at the time, that the company's trailing 12-month revenue in the U.S. government business, which includes Intel and defense agencies, surpassed $1 billion uh, for the first time. The company earned 54% of its revenue from government clients during the second quarter. And again, we were talking about as well with Palantir opening up uh, some of their programs that compile data and make accurate models. Based on them, uh, some of the entry-level entry products are now free, which is awesome. That's going to get more people uh, to kind of interact with Palantir's products and hopefully uh, expand into the rest of their suite as well. Uh, this is pretty good for Palantir. Let's see if anything else they say here. So Palantir, Microsoft, a long history of operating in secure and accredited environments to deliver technology. Okay. Yeah. So in Microsoft Azure government, in the Azure government secret, that's DOD impact level six and top secret clouds. I mean, the fact that Microsoft even has that is fantastic. 
Palantir will also be an early adopter of Azure's open AI service in Microsoft's secret and top secret environments. The integrated solutions of Microsoft's Azure Cloud compute in powerful language models uh, with Palantir's Foundry's data integration and ontology capabilities and AIP's use case building capabilities will enable operators to safely and responsibly build AI-driven operational workloads across defense and intelligence intelligence verticals. So another thing as well in this, where we speak about, you know, there's so much money going into AI, or at least there has been. Of course, you've been having a sell-off kind of recently, but that's to be expected, I would think, at some certain point. Uh, the question is, is when does this start generating some value, right? And I have this Bloomberg article over here, and you have the UK, at least, are planning to uh, develop an AI lab, and this is going to counter hostile state threats. This is really cool. And so we take a look at this a little bit, stepping uh, up efforts to tackle cyber and artificial intelligence threats from hostile foreign states. Uh, essentially what this is going to allow them to do is essentially communicate uh, cross ministry in order to develop, uh, you know, better profiles on what's going on. So different kind of threats and how you can kind of deal with that as well. Uh, I think this is really cool. Let's see. All right, let's see here. We also have Costa in Boston calling uh, regarding gold. Costa, are you there? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Great. My question to you is, if we get a 1929 depression again, what would happen to gold and gold stocks? Can you say that one more time? I'm having a hard time hearing you there, Costa. If we get a 1929 depression again, what would happen to gold and gold stocks? If we get a 1929 depression again, what will happen with gold stocks? I mean, you know, there's this idea that gold has traditionally been, you know, kind of this safe flight uh, in capital. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I have not really kind of thought about what would happen if we hit something like the Great Depression again regarding gold, right? I think you have a lot of unique asset classes that exist today that are a little bit different um, than, you know, what happened previously. You know, uh, I suppose in high deflation, you know, you could get some kind of, again, capital flight with gold if everything else is kind of deflating at a higher rate. Um, but, you know, that's a good, that's a really good question. I, I'm, I'm not sure on that, Costa. You know, what I could okay. say as well, um, you know, you could email Tom or we could wait for him to be back on to ask him that kind of question. Um, okay, but that's unique. I, I'm not sure exactly. Okay, so that's fine. Are you, are you foreseeing that we might have something like that? No, well, Donald Trump said we might have one today at his news conference. Interesting. Was that at Mar-a-Lago? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not familiar with him making that. I'll have to look at that kind of after the show. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, there are so many different asset classes that exist now um, that I, I think might compete, in a sense, with something like gold. Um, I know there's a lot of talk against crypto, and I'm not saying gold and crypto are necessarily uh, the same thing, but the way that these kind of two things operate um, are, are somewhat similar in certain circumstances. You know, I wonder if we flee out of America, if you have a deflation like that, or excuse me, a depression like that, but then you run the risk of the whole world going into something. So I don't know. That's an interesting uh, kind of question. Thanks for calling in and asking that, Costa. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, take care, Costa. Folks, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're taking a look right now at Intel Core. Uh, there's been a lot of problems going on. Obviously, pretty bad earnings. They cut the workforce and then slashed the dividends. Uh, you're trading up about 6.29% today. Um, but obviously, you have this massive gap down on, uh, on earnings. We were trading at a high right here of the year at 5030 back all the way down to a low of uh, 1884 and we're just at 2018 off that right now so i mean to keep it straight what's happening is their shareholders are suing them right and uh, essentially saying they claimed material let's see here the materially false statements um that basically contributed to a stock run from january 25th to august 5th excuse me august 1st we talk about this a little bit because they're not just suing just because the stock went down, right? So we'll talk a little bit. Uh, shareholders said that they were blindsided when Intel revealed on August 1st that its so-called foundry business for making chips on contract for outsiders was, in their words, quote, floundering, costing billions of dollars extra even as revenue declined. They said the Santa Clara, okay, they said Intel materially uh, false or misleading statements regarding the business and its manufacturing capabilities inflated its stock price from January 25th and August 1st. And of course, you can't make uh, materially false statements um, that has to do uh, with, with getting people's investments. There's actually a really interesting court case uh, that just happened regarding uh, influencers pumping and dumping. And a circuit judge said that it actually was not fraud, even though they made false statements about it and were manipulating it. But th that's probably gonna go uh, to appeals and we'll see what happens with that. But regardless, pretty insane. You know. I, a major issue as well was their Raptor Lake, right? So these are the 13th and 14th gen CPUs. And people started getting them and you have like, gaming companies using them and so on. And the things weren't working. Uh, they were completely breaking down. Um, they didn't have enough memory space, all this kind of stuff. And people are asking, you know, what what is going on? And what was turning out is that they were actually overclocking. So they weren't changing too much about it. They were overclocking the CPUs. And then sending it out saying that they were better. But the problem was that overclock was unstable and it kept leading to massive memory corruption and error messages. And Intel responded by saying, hey, just turn that overclock off, like revert to the base. Um, and that's horrible. I mean, that's, that's inexcusable. It's just ridiculous. Um, 
So they have a lot of issues going on right now. I was a little bit rosy about them. I was not, I had no position I, uh, in them, but I was saying like, you know, these guys might be kind of interesting. You know, you have all this money in the CHIPS Act, um, but all of this, I mean, obviously blindsided investors in a major way. And uh, it was surprising to me that the Raptor Lake uh, complications didn't actually make larger news because I mean, that's again, a pretty, uh, I mean, that's, that's significant information that a lot of people weren't getting on. Anyways, let's move over now. We're gonna go over to the uh, search bar here. We're gonna type in the correct thing, which is ord-oracle.com. Now, Tim Ord joins the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday, talk about the markets and particularly gold uh, at the end there. And uh, of course, we've had you know quite a volatile market since Thursday. Uh, so Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, I'm curious uh, to hear what we have to look at today, especially with this small little bounce we're getting here. Yeah, let's, let's look at the uh, S&Ps. Uh, the first chart, I might have got these out of order, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, the first chart's SPX tilt ratio. <laughs> Do you have that one? Yep, uh, that's up right now. All right, so anyhow, uh, I use this ratio, and I use the RSI off this ratio, and it, it identifies... Uh, you know, I use the trend as a panic and think above 1.2 on a daily close. I get a 10 day average up around 1.2. So I got different indicators to measure different type panics because you want to find panic in the market because only panic only forms at bottoms. So I have, a, you know, different indicators that look different types of panic, I guess. But anyhow, the, the SPX tilt ratio, so that's the, the equity market and the bond market. So it's the relationship of those two markets. And so I watched the RSI on this, and it picks it does pretty well. Uh, on Monday, we got a reading of uh, uh, 14 RSI, which is really, really low. A lot of times it gets right below 30 and usually gets up low. But when you really get below uh, 30, uh, a lot of times you have a spike bottom or a V bottom. You go straight down, turns around, goes straight back up. And I think that's maybe what's happening here. Uh, I circled in um, on the SP chart, which is the second window up from the bottom, the previous times RSI of this ratio. You can see it picked out pretty much um, all the lows. Matter of fact, back in the December of, of uh, 2023, the market was just going sideways, but that ratio got down to, to below 30. So that side, uh, sideways pattern uh, was actually a basing pattern before it rallied up. So it doesn't have to come at bottoms. It actually can, it can come at consolidation phases. But every time it gets below 30, it's, it's a bullish sign. But I wanted to point out uh, is in chart two here. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is the SPX silk ratio. This is back in 2019. And what I want to point out, previous times in 2019, this ratio got down around 14 again. And in all cases, it pretty much was a spike bottom, at least two of them were. There was actually probably about 80% of the time when the RSI hits around, you know, 15 range, uh, it's, it's, it's a spike bottom. And, uh, I could show you more examples, but there's two there, uh, even though August of 2019 wasn't really a spike bottom. It did nail the bottom, and it kind of flipped sideways for a while. But the other two went straight down, straight back up. And I'm thinking because of the RSI hitting below 14, this market in general is is, is just going to work higher here. Sure, It's not going to base build. I think it's just going to kind of really uh, dramatically go higher, I guess you might say. And we'll look at where my, my target is for the next high. And chart three, uh, this is one of, uh, uh, on Tuesday, uh, a caller called in and asked about the uh, TLT VVIX ratio and the VIX to VVIX ratio. And uh, so they were saying, since the ratio, uh, let's, start, let's start with TLT to uh, VVIX ratio, which is on the bottom window. And since it broke below the previous lows of the previous two times, uh, one back in, it looks like about October of, of last year, and the other time was April of this year, 
and we broke below those lows. That's not how do you use these ratios. You you, you measure um, the ratios are basically acceleration. You want to measure the degree of acceleration, not where it broke below a previous low or a previous high. Uh, you can't have some divergence that way. But what you do is you're trying to measure. Uh, the, velocity, the velocity of the move. Quick moves in quickly. Slow moves in slowly. So if you get a real acceleration to the downside on the TLT ratio, it, it means exhaustion to the downside. Yeah, I hear the music. Absolutely, yeah, Tim. Stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, we were talking about the VIX. VIX. Uh, sadly, we had the wrong chart up. If you could do a kind of a quick recap, what was uh, the point with chart three? Chart three. Well, uh, the top window. Well, actually, the top window is the RSI for the next window down, which is a VIX to VBX ratio, and. A scriber or one of your listeners did call in and say since that ratio broke above some previous highs, then uh, the market should break some bro below some previous lows. That's not how it works. What that RSI does is measure the acceleration, and the acceleration is, is an important part of defining market uh, tops or, or actually it works better at market bottoms because you usually accelerate down into a market bottom. So you want to find indicators that accelerate, uh, and VIX is a perfect one. So everybody, the more fear in the market, the more bullish the outcome will be. So an RSI uh, of the uh, VIX to VIX ratio, which are basically kind of a, a VIX on steroids, I guess you might say. And uh, so an RSI, it looks like, to me, it got up around 80. That's really an exhaustion move to the downside as the RSI, or the VIX, rather, uh, really accelerated to the upside where the RSI got to 80. That's a lot of fear in the market. In other words, everybody exit to the uh, to, to the exit door, and that's where you get bottom. So you want to have fear where the VIX really screams up, and uh, so that, that's that's how you use it. You don't use it compared to previous highs, previous lows. You measure it to the degree of a panic and the acceleration of the VIX. Hope that makes sense. No, it hurt. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so we, we can move on, or is there yeah. any questions about that? I, let me see. I don't think there's any more questions. I think that kind of nailed it on chart three. I do have chart four up, and this is definitely chart four. Talk about spy. All right. So we got chart four up? Yep. All right, so this is kind of a, you know, we measured, you know, you can measure fear uh, fear by the acceleration of the VIX. Another way to measure fear is, is the trend closes. This is uh, yesterday's close. We got a five-day trend of 1.33, and you got a 10-day trend, 1.24. That adds to the support of the idea that we made a bottom on Monday. Uh, we got long Monday. Um, and we're staying along. We think this this rat current rally has uh, some staying power. So we got quite a bit of fear on Monday with the acceleration of the VIX, and also with the the trend closes, especially the five day, three day, ten day. So we got quite a bit of uh, fear in the market. Uh, so we need to work that fear off before the next high goes. So where can we go? So let's go to chart five. Perfect. Uh, Okay, chart five. Uh, this is kind of a this is a longer term chart. The chart goes back to mid 2016. The top window is the RSI for the daily SPYs. I showed this chart in the past, and it works really well. But when the RSI gets up above 80, and on July 10th we had 81.98, that's never the final high. A lot of times you get uh, short term consolidations, uh, but ultimately. You, you make higher highs, so it keeps a bigger trend up. So you get that much momentum in the market, it just doesn't die. It, it consolidates and it builds some cause, I guess you might say, a wife cop term, and then start making higher highs. So I'm thinking, uh, we back in, uh, you look in two, I got two square boxes there. What's, what I think is, is probably going to mirror what's going to go on in the current market. And I kind of narrowed it down to the one in the middle of the chart is uh, right after the COVID crash. It looks like about October of 2020. I got a possible scenario. I think when we're all said and done, the current market is going to look like that. We're going to go up, we're going to go back down, and finally we're going to break out to the upside. Let's see. So, that's what I'm thinking what's going to happen. So we just started the rally uh, here, and I think we're going to pretty much go straight up in general, probably to some sort of a high in September. But uh, uh, in the bottom one, there's a 10-day RSI, 1.24, which is bullish. But so this current rally, I think it's just going to be a short-term rally. It may last a month, you know, 
maybe a month and a half at most, then we're probably going to go back down again and look similar to that one in the middle of the chart where I have possible scenario. So because of the RSI did hit above 80, ultimately we're going to break our new highs before the year's out. But between now and then, it could be kind of a rough road. So go to chart six. Perfect. Okay, we have it up. Uh, here's, yeah, here's where I think we're going to go. <laughs> I have a, a uh, anyhow, the blue part in the middle is basically where all the trend readings are, around 1. Uh, 1. 1.2 or higher. So, yeah, a slew of them. We blew through it kind of hard on Monday. We blew down a little bit through it. And sometimes the market overshoots to the upside. Sometimes it overshoots to the downside. But it had a support rate area right around that 520 to 540, 45, depends how you, you do it. But I think we're going to go back up and test that gap that we left open coming off the top back in uh, mid-July, up around that 560. And I bet we hit that uh, area. There's a small gap uh, what last week uh, around that 540 area. I don't think I don't think that's, it may hesitate the market there a little bit. But I think we're going to go back up where the bigger gap is, up around 560. And I think that's probably going to be resistance up there. But I think we'll get there fairly fairly soon, probably in the next three four weeks. So a little bit of patience. Not every day is going to be an update. But I do think we made a bottom or a V bottom. And in general, this market's kind of going to work higher uh, fairly fast. It's going to be a worthwhile percentage to the upside. Uh, I haven't done the calculations, but we've we got at least another 5 6 7% to go here, or 5 7% to go probably before we reach that target. But I do think uh, the market is probably going to hesitate that 560 area. Then, and then from there, uh, I think we go back down. Whoa. And I think we'd go back down, possibly even test uh, the May, the August 5th low again. We'll have to wait and see. So uh, we got time to get to chart seven. Yeah, so time we have about 10 seconds left um, if you want to stay for the next segment. Um, I don't know if you have anything on gold. It doesn't look like we have any charts on that. Um, but, you know, we've no, had a pretty sustained, don't. I mean, a nice pop up today as well. And gold has held pretty strong. I, I don't know if what you've. Uh, well, actually, I think that both markets are going to trade together in a nutshell. I think gold is going to go up along with uh, the equity market. Fantastic. Well, Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. 
At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, uh, before we went to the break, we were just getting to chart seven, which is the SPX, the Zwag uh, breath indicators, or the thrust, excuse right. me. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is this is something to watch for. So we, you know, we got a panic. Uh, we got panic on Monday. We got some sort of a bottom forming here. Uh, the bottom window is uh, New York advancing issues over New York total issues, and you take a ten day average, and the swag breast thrust indicator uh, kicks in when this indicator hits below point four, which it did on Monday. It actually closed at point four. And needs to rally to 0.6 or higher in 10 days. If it does that, that's a brag thrust indicator. And I got those red lines and blue lines are times when this indicator kicked in in the past. The last one we had was uh, coming off the April bottom. Uh, and one before that was the October of last year. And then we had uh, three of them in that bottom formation of uh, 2023. So right now, uh, so as of uh, yesterday's close, uh, we're at uh, 0.52. So we need to get, you know, 0 0.6, which is doable, uh, uh, 10 days from August 5th. So August 5th, uh, actually, let me get my calendar here. August 5th, uh, let's see, August 5th, this be the 19th. No, yeah, be the 19th. So by the 19th, this indicator is a 0.6. So what's that mean by the for the market? Well, chances are that reconfirms the RSI we had on uh, RSI hitting 80 on the market back in July 10th. That these when these get triggered, they only happen in bull markets. So this would reinforce the idea that probably new highs in the market are coming for the years out. So we'll have to wait and see. You can get short-term pullbacks once this indicator kicks in from 0.4 to 0.6, but ultimately you're going to hit newer high or higher highs. So that's something I'm kind of watching here. So on April 19th, if we hit 0.6, it doesn't have to be. It has to be with 10 days or less. You, can, you know, last time we got one hit was actually took us 12 days, but one back in October of 2023 only took five days. But if it can happen in by the nineteenth of August, then uh you gotta remain bullish at least till year end. Uh you know, pullback or no pullback. So that's something I'll be watching for. See if it happens by the nineteenth of of, of uh, August. So if it doesn't happen so within that time, you, you I mean does that to, indicate that we're in a, a bear market or do we just kind of have to wait for more data uh, to come out to see which direction the market wants to go? If it doesn't hit it, you yeah. mean? Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yep. Uh, well, it's, 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 it doesn't have to hit it. It's just if it does hit it, then that adds... Um, confirmation. Confirmation, yeah. I guess you get in March. There'll be other indicators I have, but I kind of watch this one. This one seems to work really well. And if you get it, you don't really want to doubt it because it doesn't really give... 
it doesn't get failing signals. So That's will it do it or not? I'm not sure. But if it does do it, that would add credit to that. Yeah, we'll probably see new highs. I do think we're going to hit new highs. That RSI thing I showed on the chart today, hitting above 80, has a really good track record. Uh, so this would be adding to that track record. So, uh, But I think between now and probably October, we're, we're just in a trading range, you know, testing the previous highs. And there's a chance we can test the August 5th low. That's a huge trading range. But it's yeah. also an opportunity to make a lot of money. Totally. Because these, these, these rallies up are really fast, and these declines are really fast down. So I'm thinking we're just going to get whipped around in the market. Uh, or I'm not going to get whipped around because I know what to look for. But if you got to watch, because uh, I'm thinking this market's going to whip up really quick and, and possibly come right back down again. Okay, and, and you more or less a side, sideways trading range. No, totally. And, and you're seeing, we have some people asking about the GDX. I know we don't have any charts today, but you're seeing kind of similar uh, movements with the GDX as with the SPX, the general market. Yeah, I, I think, and this is both markets kind of just, they're declining and rallying together. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking there's there's no whole, I thought they might separate on this decline. They really yes. didn't. They kind of kept step in step. Uh, internals look fine. The buy signals I got on the weekly and monthly charts, usually, you know, you have consolidations that usually, uh, you know, um, they're not like going to break new lows. The bottom is in for GDX. You're not going to see uh, that low again. Uh, looks like about 20, 26 area, 25 area. You're not going to see that low uh, again for a number of years. So. Mm -hmm. This market in general is still going to make higher highs and higher lows as it goes over the next uh, year and a half because the monthly charts give a bicycle on May 31st. That predicts a year and a half rally from that point. That's like November 2025. The weekly charts give a bicycle on March 18th of this year. That predicts at a minimum of a year and a half rally. So that'd be 19 or 2025 of September. So I don't know how high it is, but, uh, you won't see lower highs. You'll, you'll see just basically higher highs, and higher lows. So it's kind of like, and also the bullish percent index for the gold miners index hanging around 75%. Now, there's 75% of the gold stocks are on buy signals. And yeah. uh, so that's, that's, and a lot of these stocks, especially gold stocks that have been kind of dormant for over the last several years, are probably going to come back to life. That's what kind of a rally that this should be expected. So there'll be a lot of these. I guess penny stocks are, are going to change into five, ten dollar stocks at some point, probably in the next, you know, year and a half, two years, or whatever. How long it's rally lasts. So, uh, but the gold market is probably in step, at least so far this year, with the equity market. So one goes up, the other will go up with it. Absolutely. Yeah, and Tim, if. People want to get more of you here, you can go to the ordoracle.com. That is ord hyphen oracle. Again, I want to say as well, uh, you know, Tim, we clip these interviews and we put them on our YouTube channel afterwards. These are fantastic. If you guys kind of want to go back through it and kind of really get to what Tim is saying. Uh, also, Tim, you know, you have two uh, webinars that we have up on tfnn.com. That is under the services tab on TFNN. Scroll right up here, click it with a secret science of market tops and then six Secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. Uh, Tim, it's always fantastic to have you on. It's good to talk to you again. All right. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll talk to you guys next Tuesday. Sounds good, Tim. We'll so. see you then. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, guys, if you want to take a look about, you know, go back, kind of listen to what we were talking about, um, kind of get in there and take your time with it, right? You can go to the YouTube or go to YouTube.com, type in TFNN. Uh, a little bit after the end of the show today, we will have that archive up. Uh, you can check out all of our other archives as well. Make sure you give that video a like and a subscribe because that helps us out uh, immensely, actually. But yeah, always good to have Tim on. We're still pretty strong into the end of the day here. Um, we put this on a daily. I mean, it's still pretty strong, right? You had some pretty, I mean, I guess on the day, some larger volatility. Uh, on some higher volume, but we're still sticking up there. So we'll see if we crack, you know, I mean, we have what, 10 minutes left to go, but I've seen it many times where you get the last two, three bars just cracking straight down. Um, but anyways, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with a short segment before the end of the show. Uh, we'll see you soon.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. We just have a little short segment here before the end of the show. Uh, we'll take a look at Boeing. It's moving a little bit up today. And that is on uh, writing on the back of the new CEO's first day. Get rid of this. Up 3.56% today. Uh, still pretty low off that bottom of 159.70. Of course, they've had just a slew of problems over the past year. And they still have those astronauts stuck in space. So that's awesome. Uh, however, a lot of this, I think, is, is riding again on the back of uh, his name's Kelly Ortberg. He's the new CEO. Um, did something kind of cool where he's going to be at the original office uh, in Seattle. For This is the office of the first 85 years before it moved to Chicago. Uh, and I always kind of wondered, like, when I would, you know, be in history class when I was younger, you know, why certain emperors in Rome would, you know, establish a new kind of capital. And it, maybe this is kind of what it is, right, to restore some kind of hope. I mean, where this location is, is much closer to where the things are actually produced. It's not just the corporate office. Um, I think this is kind of neat. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if Ortberg can turn this around. Of course, we were talking about the other day how they're getting a lot of orders in for the Seekers on Patriot missiles. Uh, seekers essentially uh, orient the missile uh, in midair in order for them to hit their target. Uh, so business is obviously pretty good on that regarding uh, or in, in light of Ukraine and uh, increasing tensions in the Levant as well. Uh, let's take a look here. Talk about Bitcoin. Man, uh, what a nice little rebound for this, right? 
me one second just to get the price for it. Yeah, up 59,000. We're oh, trading at 59,716. Uh, quite off that low of that 49,000. Again, that was roughly its floor. Uh, you have a lot of cash inflow <laughs> into ETFs for for crypt, excuse me, for Ether and Bitcoin itself. And uh, a lot of this is from institutional investors as well. So they probably saw it as kind of a sale uh, for Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum as well. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me. It's always good to be on with you guys. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Again, check our YouTube channel out, TFNN, and uh, you can re-watch the interview with Tim Ord. If you missed it, go ahead, give that video a like, and subscribe to us. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.